Hey everybody, welcome to our uh, Wednesday Live. And listen, we have our special guest today. Uh, Britt Gillette is joining me, is going to be here on Monday. We've had some very interesting problems uh, beginning on Monday of this week. And uh, I think we've got them all fixed. So we're good to go. We should be live right now on the app. We should be live on YouTube. Uh, we should be live on Roku. Should be live everywhere. So I want to welcome everybody for joining us. Let me make sure everything's up and running from here. It looks like it actually is. It is. And there's people on the app watching. It's great. Welcome. Uh, welcome, everybody. And, and welcome, Britt. And we are going to have quite a conversation today. Um, so... Oh, hold on one second. I already messed this up. Uh, th this is just a problem I have. I am so technically challenged. It is amazing. Okay, I got it all. I'm all good. I'm all good. <laughs> uh, I, 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 maybe I'm too old for this, Brent. I don't know. Um, I, I grew up driving a stick shift, a Volkswagen stick shift. That's what I learned to drive on. So, uh, there you go. Yeah, I, I can still do that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is wonderful having you. Thank you so much for taking time out to come back again. And, oh, my uh, pleasure. Thank you. This is great. So uh, we have an exciting time today. And um, so Britt is just a, a wealth of information. And, um, and we're going to be talking about the economy. I want it will be part of it. And then we're going to get into what's going on with technology Uh I'm sure many of you have been watching the explosion of chat GPT over the last two months, but just in the last, I'd say 48 hours, the things that are coming out about chat GPT and the direction it's going, how fast it is going, how controlling it is. And uh, it's going to, it's just really something else. And we really need to be well informed literally within the last 48 hours. Uh, the news just coming out about it is, is it's over the top. So we have a lot to talk about. People are concerned about uh, digital currencies. And so Britt is the smartest person in the world, I think, next to chat I don't GPT. Know about that. <laughs> smartest person I know. And, uh, <laughs> so, so let's start with the economy. And then we're going to go to a little bit about digital currency because they'll tie together. But we've got to get to what people need to know about uh, what is happening with chat GPT because it's it's alarming, but we need to be prepared. And if we, as you said earlier off air, Britt, if we know this, uh, it's gonna be our only way to not be deceived and not be caught up into this mess because the deception, I think of the words of Jesus. In fact, as my update just about an hour ago, will be so great, Jesus said, if possible, even the elect would be deceived. That's what's coming. It's gonna rapidly right. increase. If people think the last three years was there was deception. It's like, hold on to your seats, man, because things are coming. Okay, enough of me talking, right? <laughs> Turn it over to you. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, you wanted to talk about the the economy and central bank digital currencies. And you know, we talked a little yeah. bit the last time I was on your show about those central bank digital currencies and how quickly they would come, maybe what the catalyst for that would be. And I believe it's going to be the next major financial crisis. And I think that right now we are heading toward a global depression and a financial crisis. And there's a lot of data points out there that show us that. So for instance, the Federal Reserve has been hiking interest rates over the past year. If you've read the news, you know that. But if you look at the official government data, it'll show that we've gone from a, a rate of last year, the, the Fed funds rate was about 0.08% all the way up to 4.33% as of the latest government data from, from January 1st. They since hiked again. And when you look at the decades of data that's available on the Federal Reserve website, it doesn't look like that's a big deal because certainly if you were alive in the 1970s, the early 1980s, today's rates would seem low compared to that. But when you look at that data in a different way and you look at it in terms of year over year percentage change in those rates, what you see is, is an astounding visualization of what's coming. So you would see decades of a flat line. And then at the end of that, over the last year, you see a straight line upward. So in other words, in the past, the, high, the most that rates had gone up year over year was back in 1959 
They went up 410% year over year. As of the latest data from the Fed, they're up 5,312%. And so again, when you look at that on a, on a graph, you see just a straight vertical line upward. And so we hear all this data about, you know, the Federal Reserve is gonna bring us in for a soft landing. But when you look at that data, you know that, no, they're gonna fly us into the side of a mountain. And that's what the data is showing us. So we've had in 2022, real disposable income in the United States declined the most since 1932, which is considered the depths of the Great Depression. And then we've seen M2 money supply, which is a measure of the amount of money that's circulating in the economy. That has dropped and gone negative in a way that it hasn't done since the Great Depression. And so all of this data is telling me that we're heading into a global depression, especially when you look at Europe and the energy crisis that's over there. Again, that just because the winter hasn't been as bad as people thought, a lot of the news media has gone away from the, the stories of the, the, the worst nightmare scenarios of that energy crisis. But at the end of the day, you, you, Nord Stream Pipeline is no longer sending natural gas from Russia to Germany. That's been shut off since September. And prior to the war in Ukraine, Germany got 50% of its natural gas from Russia. That's now cut off. They were the engine of the European economy. So even though they are still receiving energy, they haven't run out. They're getting that through liquefied natural gas, which is much more expensive, which means that their energy prices have gone up two, three, fourfold what they were before all of this happened. And that's going to lead to their industries leaving and shutting down, people being unemployed. This is deflationary, and it signals a, a depression is ahead of us, a global depression. Uh, so yeah, I, hearing those words and looking, I do follow the financial markets. I have for years. I find it very interesting. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll go home tonight, and I'll watch some things. It's one of the ways I unwind is to see what happened today, what's expected to come tomorrow. But we, I, I look at it and I believe that is what we are headed to. When I look at the Bible, uh, my mind goes to the writer on the black horse, where you have uh, a day's wage for um, what a loaf of bread. So we, the Bible projects a time coming during the tribulation period where there is a massive hyperinflation, um, uh, global depression, and where literally is a day's wage for a loaf of bread, and, and it's just absolutely devastating. I believe also in there, Brit, that where the Bible speaks of that, it seems to be orchestrated because you have, the, in that same passage, uh, the Bible says, um, don't harm the oil and the wine. So you have the masses of people that are suffering but the elite class, which is I, rep, I believe is represented by the oil and the wine, are not harmed by this. And the, the manipulation behind it, sometimes I look at these global markets and I think that's what is happening. Well, actually, pretty much all the time I look at them, it seems to me like things are being manipulated for the purpose of power, for the purpose of control. And everything I understand if, if these uh, people at the top take the World Economic Forum and these other globalists uh, who have the money, the more they collapse everything, uh, they're gonna own everything in the end. The more they can take away from the people, the more they're gonna have. Right, yeah, I would agree with your, your assessment of Revelation 6. I've read it, read it the same way that the, the, this calamity will not arm the rich the way it does the poor and middle class. And I think that, you know, going into this crisis that's going to come, this is how they're going to roll out the central bank digital currency that we've been hearing about. And back in uh, November, there was a meeting at the, the FDIC. For those in the United States, that's the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So they oversee insuring bank deposits in the United States. So there's not runs on banks and they had this three and a half hour meeting. Uh, it was basically a war gaming out the next financial crisis and what they would do, how they would stop these runs on banks, how they would uh, keep the public from panicking essentially. And a lot of the 
comments from that meeting made their rounds on social media. So I wanted to check, make sure these weren't out of context. So I watched that entire meeting and turns out some of those things were exactly as they were presented in social media. So for instance, there was, there was one participant there. He said, well, you know, the, the general public has a lot more faith in the banking system than those of us in this room do. And then they all started laughing. And he said, but, you know, we want them to have that faith. <laughs> and then you, then you had another participant, this woman, she said, what we need to do is our agency needs to find out when to be transparent and who to be transparent to. And so <laughs> that shows you, you know, just the level of deception that's going on among those agencies. But within that three and a half hour meeting was just a golden nugget of information that I saw this exchange between two of the participants. And I thought to myself, this is how central bank digital currency is going to be sold to the public. So there was one of the participants said, well, we know there are systemically important banks. So that's these big banks like JP Morgan, that if they went bankrupt, it would cause this massive global financial contagion. So they want to prevent that. But they said, there's also uh, globally systemic non-banks. How do we get a look at the data that they have? How do we see you know behind the wall of what they hold can we use uh authority of dodd frank the le legislation that was passed after the financial cra crisis in 2008 2009 to see that and the, the long answer that was given was basically no there's no way to see that when he said that i thought this is how they're going to roll it out because inevitably there's going to be some sort of massive collapse a lehman moment you know mm -hmm referencing when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt in 2008 or Bernie Madoff when it was found that he was running this Ponzi scheme, this fraud. And what they'll do is they'll point to events like that in the next financial crisis. And they'll say, this is the reason for the financial crisis, not our decades of terrible government policies, but the frauds perpetrated by these companies who went out and maybe got loans from three or four different banks using the same collateral. We could have prevented that if we had insight into what they were doing financially. And with central bank digital currency, we will have that data, we will have that information, and we will be able to stop those things from taking place before they cause a threat to the global financial system. And that's gonna resonate with possibly millions of people who have lost their jobs, who are finding it hard to pay their rent, pay their mortgage, buy groceries, to hear, we can prevent this from ever happening again if we simply use the central bank digital currency that would give us insight into these types of transactions. And then while they're at it, as we discussed last time, they'll say, go claim your digital wallet with the central bank. There's $10,000 waiting for you or 20,000 or 50,000 or whatever they have to offer in order to entice you to go into that. And then once you do that, you're trapped. And so that's where this is coming. Many people will gladly give up their freedom and liberty for the promise of security and protection. Yep, that's, uh, uh, that's troubling, but yet it is all going that direction. And when I think of FTX, or you start thinking of the uh, regular, we, we think of Bitcoin. I, I look at some of these, these stories that are coming out, like FTX and, and uh what's his name, you, they're easy to set up and say, look, we have a type of Bernie Madoff in this industry. We can put an Absolutely. end to them. And they're going to use every single one of them uh, for whatever extent they can in order to support that narrative. And so I do think when it comes to FTX, we're gonna hear a lot more people that are gonna be losing their money in these things. Um, and it's going to just make more and more people be on board with everything that you are saying. Uh, I have a hard time thinking that people, if you, you take somebody, uh, Britt, that is worth, say, um, $100 million, I, I'm thinking in my mind, how are they going to get a person like that to switch over and gladly go with digital currency? Um, will it be crises so big that it's destroying them at the same time? Or do you have any thoughts on that? 
Well, we can look to the past, I guess, for something like that. I mean, for instance, in Nazi Germany, we had many industrialists that backed the Nazi party, and they didn't see them as a threat to their own freedom and liberty. They saw, we're going to be a part of the system. We're going to be controlling it. And they found out afterward, like many revolutionaries do, that they it was out of control once the revolution took place, and they lost their place at the table, or they retained it and became part of that oppressive regime. But as you said, with FTX, we're already seeing places like uh, the United States where legislation is being proposed and the UK, United Arab Emirates, where they're talking about uh, regulating cryptocurrencies almost out of existence, providing so many uh, hurdles that have to be overcome that people wouldn't be able to hold those currencies or, or operate such exchanges. And their reason, their stated reason, is to protect people, right? To protect people from the fraud, protect people from losing their savings. But when you dig deeper, it's really they don't want any competition for their central bank digital currency because ultimately they're pushing for this cashless society. Just this past weekend, the United Arab Emirates came out with a nine-stage program for changing their financial infrastructure. And stage one was to roll out a central bank digital currency. And in their press release, they stated several reasons. And the last one on that list was to ultimately achieve a cashless society. So why would that be a goal? The only reason that would be a goal is they want to have insight into all of that data, just like the participant in that FDIC meeting. They want to control, they want to have power over that system and be able to determine who can use it, who can't, and use that to manipulate people. And so that's that's what's coming next down the road is they're going to make it so difficult they'll legislate away other options like Bitcoin. Mm. Very fascinating. I know we talked last time uh, giving some projections on when, but I mean, it's it, it, everything is is we can speculate all we want uh, on that part of it, but we can see it all coming. I mean, we can see every single thing that the Bible warned us about. We can watch it develop. Uh, sure. And we don't know exactly when, but it is coming. I mean, they're all talking about the same thing. Okay, so we take this with the economy, which, you know, people always ask me, well, what am I supposed to do? How can I be prepared? I mentioned the FDIC. Uh, and I want to get over to the, the chat GPT thing here in just a second, but sure. you mentioned the FDIC. So I don't, you know, how are people going to protect their money? So supposedly your money's protected. If you have a lot of money up to $250,000 is what I think is the FDIC protection. But is there actually any protection at all from with what is coming other than will roll out digital currency and you'll have X amount of dollars in your digital wallet. Do you think that's basically just going to be the how that will be handled? Sure. Yeah, I think that, you know, people, I, I believe those FDIC limits will be honored, not because the government is honorable, but because they can just push a button and create that currency. And so no politician in their right mind would empty the bank account of their voters and their citizens when they can just push a button and print the cash. Now that doesn't mean that your purchasing power of that cash you had would still be there. But, you know, I think if, you, if you're looking for protection and some short, sort of short term solution, real things that you can hold in your hand that you control yourself, possibly gold and silver. But again, that's going to be very limited in who you can trade with locally for that Ultimately, they're going to push for the society that they control. And I think we had mentioned last time I was on the show about how if you go to Walmart now and you, they have self-checkouts everywhere, and when you're checking out, they have a camera on your face. And so even if you use cash, they can use facial recognition technology to link that buying, that, that point of sale with you as an individual. So they'll still have that data. So there's other means for them gathering and collecting this data. And they'll be able to put the pressure on businesses whenever they want to roll this out to say, you will accept these forms of payment. You'll either accept 
uh, central bank digital currency, or if you're going to take cash or other means of payment, we want a video of who's making those purchases. And if you don't do that, well, you lose your business license. And so businesses will go along with that. They'll be strong armed into going, going along with that. As for how quickly all of this could come to be, we're really there as far as central bank digital currency goes, because we have 114 countries right now are either exploring or in pilot programs with it. Two of the countries with pilot programs at the retail level, meaning citizens are using these for everyday transactions right now, are India and China, the two most populous nations on the face of the earth. So these nations, they're rolling this stuff out. I believe we'll see it pretty much in every modern nation by the end of this year. Now, how quickly it becomes commonplace and used by citizens in everyday transactions, that's probably still down the road another year or two, but they could roll this out very quickly, especially in a crisis scenario where people are demanding it and where people are going to claim those central bank digital currency dollars just in order to be able to survive. So they go and they sign up and along the way, the cash, cash is outlawed. We're seeing this in, in Nigeria right now. So a little over a year ago, Nigeria rolled out its own central bank digital currency, well, people don't like it. So it's <laughs> it has a usage rate of, I think about a, less than half a percent of the people are uh-huh. using it. So in order, it, it, do they sit back and say, wow, we're not serving the people and giving them what they want. Maybe this was a bad idea. No, instead they've put these onerous restrictions on how much cash can be deposited and withdrawn from the local bank. And they're trying to get away from cash and push people and force people into using their central bank digital currency. So it's clear people don't want it, but the governments do, and they're going to use every means at their disposal to roll this out at some point in the future. That's about control. And just think of all the, you know, you mentioned the data collection with the face, your facial recognition at Walmart. Sure. Then you have data collection with Facebook, data collection with everything on social media, uh, our cars, collect data on us or houses collect data on us. Right. You know, you've written a lot about the different data collection. Our phone. Uh, phones. So you've got a phone that's, <laughs> that they know just about everything they need to know about you just from that. So I discovered this, that if I do one, if I just want to find out information on a product, all I got to do now on my phone, I just type up one thing and for the next week, I will get all the information on that product <laughs> right. from all the different stores. So I'm, since it's going to happen, I say, well, I'm going to try and use it to my own advantage <laughs> instead of searching all these different things myself. So I did that just the other day. And I, and I just keep getting all these different links for these different websites that offer that thing. But that's just the reality of the world that we live in, the data collection, the, what they know about us. Okay, real quick, and then we'll get over to this very troubling news that's coming this week with uh, this chat stuff. Um, and I, I know you can't say for sure, so I'm not asking you to say that, but when it comes to Russia-Ukraine situation, I, I view it in a way that the U.S. really doesn't have an exit plan. I don't see Russia just... I don't see Putin turning around saying, okay, we give up. I don't see that happening from either side. It's like you get the, there's too, you have way too much pride involved, way too much at stake is involved. The globalists are not going to let it go from the West side. Putin's not going to let it go. China funds, China's involved in it. I, I don't, I don't see this going anywhere good at all. I see it escalating into worse things. What, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, it's definitely, it is, a, it is a conflict that neither one is going to back down from. Whether or not that results in some sort of a nuclear exchange, I really don't know. I know in, I believe it was 2019, they had a war game in Washington, D.C. with this exact same scenario. It was Russia invaded Ukraine, and NATO engaged in a proxy war to stop that from happening. And there was escalation that led to nuclear conflict and 2 billion people were killed in that conflict. 
I don't know if that's how it will play out. I think ultimately, when it comes down to it, this is about, it's about power. It's about way more than Ukraine. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, the global monetary system. It's about US projection of power, which comes from its financial dominance. So we saw that when this, uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine, the first steps that the United States and its allies took was to issue sanctions, kick Russia out of the SWIFT system, push all of these financial, uh, onerous financial obstacles in their way, trying to break them. And other nations saw this take place <laughs> and said, what happens to us if we get on the wrong side of the United States? And so you've seen in the time since then, you've seen more and more nations wanting, coming out and saying they want to join the BRICS nations. So that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And they've openly talked about creating a commodity-backed currency to compete against the United States and the dominance of the dollar in international trade. And that's what all of this, I believe, is about, because ultimately that dollar dominance is where the US, U.S. power comes from. That's how the U.S. is able to have military bases all over the world and field this massive military. It's because of that financial dominance, and it's built on a fiat currency, meaning nothing's backing that up. It's just pieces of paper. But we've been using that. The, the, that's been used for trade. It's been used specifically in the trade for oil, since the 1970s and now we've seen saudi arabia come out and say no we're not going to do that anymore we're going to take payment in other currencies and a lot of that had to come from too uh back in august 2021 when the united states just pulled out of afghanistan left people behind that had helped left u.s citizens behind at the mercy of the taliban and part of the reason that well, the reason that Saudi Arabia agreed to this petrodollar system back in the 1970s that will only trade oil for dollars was in exchange for a guarantee of the Saudi family's royal family security by the United States. And so when they saw that, sure, they thought, well, what good is a promise from the United States? And most people don't know they signed a defense pact later that week with Russia. And ever since then, they've been moving closer and closer to Russia and China. And so we're seeing much of the world aligning against the United States and its Western allies. And it's, those are the battle lines of this war that right now is, is a proxy war in Ukraine, but it's also a financial war. It's an information war. It's a war on many fronts right now. But it, I believe in, in that sense, it is a world war right now that's ongoing it just hasn't the, the shooting hasn't spilled outside of the borders of ukraine yet but it potentially could uh, it's it's it's, it's uh, interesting and it's troubling and again you go back to the the four horsemen of the apocalypse uh you think of the red horse and the great war that is going to break out and you you know i look at it brit it's like the Lord is holding everything back because we can see all of these things uh, that are developing and uh, very disturbing, you know, just to, to, to watch all of this come about if you don't know the Lord. But if you know the Lord, hey, man, we have hope, you know, and so we've got to stay in the Bible. We need, we need the word. The psalmist said, I would have perished in my affliction did I not hope in your word. And it's his word that gives us hope. His word warned us what the world was going to look like. Uh, I was with Jan Markell probably about a year ago, and she was answering somebody's question, and she said, well, what did you think the last days were going to look like? You know, and it's just that reminder that we do have the word. Okay, and we'll talk about uh, chat GPT, and uh, before we go there real quick, I want to let everybody know this. Uh, listen, there's a lot of people that are committing fraud that are out there, and um, one of them is got this fake Instagram account. If you can pull it up real quick. There you go. Okay, see that? So that is not me. It's a picture of me when I was skinnier. That's not me. Can't see the top of it. That's a bummer. It says Tom Hughes Prophecy, but it has an L in there. I don't have an L in my, in my name. This is a whole fake account. 
Uh, it even has a website on, on the Instagram right there where you see the arrow, ccogt.org. That is a, a Calvary Chapel in um, uh, Yonkers, New York. It's a friend of mine that's the pastor that I talked with him this morning. I said, hey, you're being implicated on my fake Instagram account. And he says, oh, no. So listen, the, uh, I know Jan Markell's got this going on. Amir does, Sarfati, and, and it's happening. Listen, these are, these are liars. They're fakes. Um, and we don't send out, they send out notes. They say, hey, we have an orphanage. Send money to us. Uh, they don't say send money to that Calvary Chapel. What they do is they tell you to send money somewhere else. These are liars. Listen, we, don't, we never solicit. Uh, we, we don't do that. If somebody wants to donate, they donate through the app or website. We don't, we don't solicit. We don't send out emails. We don't send out texts. It's terrible. So don't give money to these people and report them to. They're liars. They're fraudsters. Okay, let's get back to this. Okay, so Britt, uh, chat a GPT, and then I want to take some questions. I, I'm very concerned about it. Uh, some alarming things have come out just in the last few days alone. But I mean, you've written on this. Uh, and sure. so you've been writing about, I, I, I've been reading your technology newsletters for a long time. And so you're way ahead of the game, way ahead. And um, just, I, I mean, I'm looking now and in, in going, okay, they're going to take what, uh, they're going to say, okay, this, this, is, this is fake. We already hear that in the narrative. And chat GPT actually will have all of the arguments for the reason why we can't trust the Bible. And there are going to be many people that are going to be deceived. But it goes, it, it, it's so disturbing um, that, and it's coming, it's coming super fast. But walk us real quick to help people understand the, what chat GPT is and the, the dangers of it and, and what's already here. Well, basically, it's this, this artificial intelligence there's, there's talk about these types of things and can they be sentient, meaning they think independently, they mimic the human mind. I believe that that's not the case, that they're just very sophisticated algorithms that it's hard for us to grasp the difference between what would be deemed sentient and what is not. But what we're seeing is we're seeing, I think in this case, like technology, for instance, technology is neutral. It's neither good nor bad, but mankind is fallen and sinful. And so when mankind takes that technology, we see them often use it for terrible things. And so that's what we're seeing here with chat GPT and Google's ro rolling out Bard and Alibaba's rolling out their version of this type of chat bot. We're, we're going to see more and more of these in the year ahead, but ultimately the information they're providing is only as good as the information that's input into those algorithms. And if those algorithms are slanted in a certain way, that's what's going to come out. That's what's going to be programmed into this artificial intelligence going forward. And of course, that artificial intelligence can work to create better versions of itself down the road, but it's gonna carry man's sinfulness through it for through every iteration of that new intelligence that that goes forward and so it, the the implications for deceit and propaganda are ast astronomical the the ability to manipulate people psychologically with these to where you could have you know we've already seen it we were just talking about fake online personas well imagine something that's far more realistic that's able to mimic how you talk, that could carry on a conversation with someone, you can direct them to certain news stories, and basically you can help direct thoughts of people. And we were talking before the program about that's why it's more important than ever. Somebody had asked recently, how do you know what news is true and what's not? How do you know where to go for reliable information? And I know that the Bible is a reliable source of information. So we need to be grounded in the word. We need to know our Bible. We need to be in it every day. And everything that we see, everything we hear, we need to filter through that biblical understanding. And if it contradicts the Bible, we need to throw it out and ignore it. 
And so that's how we're, we're going to be able to make it through these times. But anyone that isn't grounded in the word of God is going to be deceived, plain and simple. That's, that's the way it's going to be. Mm, uh, very well said. Uh, so when, when I start working this out in my mind, we already know about all the, the label of misinformation that's out there. And so we hear talk now uh, coming from certain people in the media, even politicians saying, hey, the Bible is misinformation. It needs to be labeled as such. So we're hearing it. So this is out there. Chat GPT has the ability to bring arguments against the Bible that the average Christian would have a hard time debating. Um, they, and it would really stumble them. And I don't think it's in the uh, too distant future where the Bible will be outlawed because of misinformation based on chat GPT. And I, I think, Britt, what is going to happen, and again, this is just speculation, so I admit that. Don't know for sure, everybody, but I believe it's going to get to the point where something like chat GPT is going to become the word and the Bible misinformation where uh, people will say, well, the, you know, we would say, well, the Bible says this, and we could go into the history, and we could teach it and so forth, and chat GPT would come back and say, well, this is wrong, the historians were wrong here and there, and so therefore, no, this part is just really a myth that's here, and once the Bible is labeled as misinformation, you're going to see the disappearance of Bible apps. They're not going to be allowed anymore. It's going to be fake news. They're coming after these things. And the censorship is going to increase rather uh, significantly to the point, Britt, where I absolutely believe you need to memorize the word in our heart. You're going to need the written word. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm looking going, I mean, I just think back a few years, or if I, let me go back into the late 1980s, when I used to memorize the Bible, when I first got saved, and it was great. Then you go into, say, the 2000s, and then you get to phones, and, and you can pull up any Bible verse you want. Just do a Google search. You don't even have to memorize it anymore. Well, because of that, the Word of God has not been placed into the heart of many people. They don't know it apart from whatever they have in, uh, with their laptop or their phone or something like that to go to... to go do a Google search. You eliminate that possibility. Man, people are going to be stranded if they do not have the word in their heart. They don't have the written word also. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I think it's very clear. They've made it very clear. There's certain narratives they want to want to push whoever, whoever's controlling the media and that there's no doubt that that's where they're going. We've seen it in other countries with where certain parts of the Bible, you can get thrown in jail for reciting those Bible verses. So there's no doubt that that's going to come out. And I think it, it's right of you to point to this artificial intelligence as what people are going to look, look to. And when we look at what the Bible says about the tribulation and when it speaks about much of the world worshiping the Antichrist, everybody that takes the mark will worship the Antichrist. They won't just take the mark, they will worship him. And where does that you know, he presents himself in the temple as God. And so we see some of these technologies. Well, what is God? What are some of the characteristics of God? Omniscience, meaning having knowledge of everything. Um, omnipresence, so being everywhere at once. So we can, you can see these technologies roll out as they grow exponentially, which they are right now, to a point where one man could merge with this technology like the transhumanists are talking about and be able to through cameras and listening devices and access to artificial intelligence like this seem to have all the answers knowledge of everything that's going on and ha and convince a large segment of people that he is god and yep. so <laughs> they're going to be deceived if they're not grounded in the word of god going to have these these uh, char uh, characteristics that will seem very godlike. Very interesting also, the Bible says the, the miracles that will be done between the false prophet and antichrist, they will be lying wonders. 
So they won't be real miracles like Jesus did. They will be, there's going to be all this manipulation and technology gives this ability. I mean, I'm looking at uh, some of the other things that are coming with some of the technology that's out there. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, It was, uh, somebody is talking about it from uh, Israel. Uh, I was talking with John Haller about it and Dennis Swick from his channel that the lame will walk, the blind will see, the deaf will hear. These are line wonders, but it's based on technology. Do you remember what that was? No, I, I did. I was going to bring up that Elon Musk with Neuralink, when they announced that FDA trials were six months away, he had talked about, you know, the purpose of that was supposedly to provide sight to, pe- to people who were blind, to provide the uh, uh, re- re- restored use of limbs to people who were paralyzed. You know, all of these things that seem good that are mimicking the miracles of Jesus. But he also said it within that, well, I'm going to get one too. Right, I'm going to get one of these brain chips too. And I thought, well, to my knowledge, he's not deaf or blind or paralyzed. Why is he going to get one of these? And I think that shows this this move toward transhumanism that people have been talking about. But yes, I you know I wrote a book several years ago called Racing Toward Armageddon that pointed to these exact things that the Antichrist, if he arrives in tandem with these technologies, will be able to mimic pretty much every miracle but the resurrection that Jesus performed because it's just manipulation of the physical world. And we're getting to a point where the emergence of technology is going to allow us to have complete mastery as human beings over the physical world around us. And it's coming much faster than many people think precisely because these things are growing exponentially. You know, before we went on, we were talking about there's a guy named Ray Kurzweil, who is an inventor. He was one of the first inventors of uh, speech uh, to word translation technology back in the 1960s. He's a futurist. He's a transhumanist. I believe he still works at Google now, but he wrote a book back in 2006 called The Singularity is Near. And he had written a number, he put together this chart on projecting a thousand dollars worth of computing power from the invention of the computer going to about the middle of this century. And so keep in mind, this was 17 years ago that he put this out. And his projection was that in the year 2023, $1,000 worth of computing power would be equal to the computing power of the human brain. And what are we seeing with the emergence of chat GPT right now? We're seeing people have given the Wharton MBA exam to this, and it passed. It's passed the bar exam. It can write essays that are indistinguishable from some of the greatest minds in the human race. It can do all of these things. It can think in a way or put out, output a product in such a way that appears human-like. And so, and and the premium product is $42 a month. So that's less than $1,000 a year. So I believe that he proved right in that projection, but his projection going forward for the year 2045, he said $1,000 worth of computing power. Keep in mind, we're not talking all computing power, just $1,000. So that's the equivalent of, you know, a high-end smartphone right now would have the computational power of every human brain on the planet. So that shows you the exponential power of that. And I would say, you know, at that point, we can't begin to imagine the changes that are taking place on Earth. Not not in the year 2045, but if that proves true, far before 2045. Because that would mean you would have, you know, all the computational power of everybody on Earth many years before for just a higher price tag. I mean, $1,000 is is nothing compared to the financial resources that governments have, that companies like Google and Amazon and Facebook and Microsoft have, have billions of dollars sitting on their balance sheet that they can spend on these types of technologies. And those technologies can be used to create new versions of themselves, discover new products, simulate laboratory experiments for new discoveries. So the pace of change and discovery is going to remain exponential, I believe, right up until 
the moment that Jesus Christ returns. Man, and I'm hoping that, uh, I'm hoping that comes rather quickly. <laughs> it's like, oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Um, I have a question on here regarding the image of the beast, but before we go there uh, and I ask you about that, just a real quick uh, reminder, everybody. Listen, Josh Aaron's going to be joining me a week from tonight, February 22 at 412 Church in Southern California. You can check it out. It's on the events on the website, Hope for Our Times. Hope you can join us. Um, and then also the Orlando Prophecy Conference is coming up. Uh, I do know the conference is sold out, but you can, they have an online uh, opportunity for you to be able to go online and check out. It's going to be a terrific conference. Can't wait to be there. And I know I have a couple of other things also, but they're going to have to wait because I can't remember what they are. So with that, okay, Brett, here's the first question. I know we've already been, we've already been on 45 minutes. Wow. So doesn't so, seem like it. <laughs> so, that's been wonderful. Okay. Uh, what do you, you know, give the technology that it is, what do you think the image of the beast will be? I have no idea. Me neither. <laughs> it is maybe himself. I really don't know. It is. It is. Um, I look at the image of the beast, and I think now, okay, the the image of the beast from Revelation chapter thirteen, it's going to appear to have life, and you start thinking of technology, and technology is getting to that place where it's going to be able to mimic even that. So I'm thinking these things are coming real soon. At least, boy, I sure hope they are. Okay. Here's another question from Jeffrey Booker. Have you guys heard of a book called Recognizing the Real Enemy by author Miguel Dumoli? This book talks about frequency of Satan and negative influence into your mind. I have not heard of it. Do you know anything about that? No, I haven't heard of it. Okay, that. then I guess we better not comment on something that we haven't heard about. Um, all right, let's see. So I forgot to tell everybody, start sending your questions about a minute ago. We're about 30 seconds ahead of where we are. Um, now uh, let's see. So if you get your questions, start sending them in. I don't see them yet, so I'm still waiting. Okay. All right, Britt, just keep, let's keep going until somebody, till somebody gets their next question in here. Okay. So with, um, uh, the, I tell you what, I have an announcement that I do need to make and here, let me get to this one first. Uh, this is from Truth Gardener. What are your thoughts, please, about the Asbury revival? Do you have any thoughts on that? No, no I didn't not, think so. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> okay, I, you know, I, I don't really have any thoughts on it either. So uh, sorry about that. So we have two questions that we just don't really have much input on. So if you have any more th any more questions you want to throw in here, that would be great. So we're all for them. But in the meantime, I tell you what I've got to do. I have an announcement that I, I need to make, and uh, if you all would just, if you're on YouTube, if you could switch over to hopeforourtimes.com, the website, or you can go over to uh, the, the app, um, just going over there now. Uh, we gotta go uh, uh, off YouTube. We have some things that are gonna be a little bit too sensitive for YouTube right now. So if you could head on over to the app and, and or the website, you can stay on Roku if you're there watching this. Uh, that'll be cool. So we'll look forward to uh, seeing you there in just a second. This is one question from YouTube. Uh, for Britt, uh, what do you know about graphene? Okay, let's not go there. Let's do that on the app. We can't talk about that here. So, okay. Uh, we are getting questions, a lot of questions in now. Donkey, Donkey Works says, uh, what are the implications about the amount of U.S. debt to China? Can they crash our economy and how will it work uh, when CBDC comes out. So, uh, you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that um, they could crash our economy pretty quickly by just cutting off trade because we've outsourced a lot of our manufacturing to China. As far as the debt, I mean, the, in order to get rid of it, they have to sell it to someone. I think that we're doing a pretty good job of crashing it ourselves without China's help. I mean, we've we, we've spent beyond our means for a long time. We have a, a dollar that's not backed by anything and has been losing value consistently for decades now. And I think we're at a we're coming to a point right now where there's no way out. If they if they continue to raise rates, they're going to push the United States into a depression. Tax revenues are going to go down. The budget deficit will balloon. 
we'll get to a point where the interest on the national debt is far beyond anything that we know right now. And it'll just, it'll just start piling on the debt and the debt will grow exponentially until everything crashes. Nobody has any faith. The, the, end, the end for the U.S. dollar and the U.S. financial system is when people no longer have faith in it. If they don't believe they're going to get paid back, they're going to dump our debt, they're going to dump our dollars, and they're going to turn to other things like gold and silver and farmland and oil and whatever else they believe will hold its value. The problem is if we lower rates so that that doesn't happen, well, we end up with more of the inflation we got before and that inflation will ultimately do the same thing. The outcome will be the same. So the outcome ultimately, whether it's a year from now or 10 years from now for the United States, is collapse financially, regardless of which road we take because of decades of poor decision-making. I personally believe what's ultimately going to collapse the US financial system will be the rapture. But that doesn't mean that we can't have a lot of steps along the way where the U.S. financial system becomes less influential on the world stage. Yeah. I think that's the key to understanding a lot of steps on the way. Uh, by the way, we're, I see we're still on YouTube. I think we are going to be going over to just the app here in just a second because some things I need to tell everybody. So uh, as soon as we're over on the app only, please uh, let me know, you guys. Appreciate that. Um, with the, the steps on the way, um, 